Hi everyone. Today's class we're working into firefly pose. It's a really fun pose. Two blocks are really helpful for this class. Again, we're preparing the body for working on this arm balance. If you don't have it in your practice already, that doesn't matter. I'll offer variations throughout. Okay, so we're going to start in a child's pose today. You can bring the toes touching, the knees wide apart. And then for this one, try to get the knees quite wide apart. So you're going to really open up into the hips. And then just rest the torso between the line of the legs. And you can extend your arms out in front of you. It's nice here to take the hands a little wider than shoulder width apart. It really starts to encourage that openness through the upper back. And um, you know, it's a little more comfortable too. So take the hands wide and then just rest the forehead down on the mat. And take a couple moments there to firm down through your hips towards your heels. And to feel the subtle opening here of the inner groins. And then just soften the belly between the thighs. And just taking a moment to draw inward. To set any kind of intention for your practice, if you like to set intention for your practice. But more than anything, just feeling like you can really bring yourself fully present to your body in this space and to the breath in your body. And we'll just take three rounds of breath here and see if you, when you, if you can feel this. So as you inhale, feel the back of the heart rising towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, feel yourself grounding and rooting even more into the earth. And two more like that, full deep inhale, feel the buoyancy of the upper back as it lifts skyward. And then exhale, root and firm down and back into the earth. And one more, inhale, full deep breath in. And all the way out, exhaling. Okay, and then on your next inhale, simply slip your hands towards your knees to sit all the way up. Take your hands behind you so that you can slip out your legs and then go into a wide-legged forward fold here. It's early and if you're in a cold place, you might not be feeling warm at all for this. So you can keep a little bend in your knees and just gently access the pose. Take your feet as wide as you can, plug down through your heels, spread through your toes. You can pull your buttocks flesh up and away and then begin to walk your hands forward. If you need to just remain seated, that's fine too. But start to open up into the backs of the legs. Again, there can be a soft bend through the knees here. And like you did in your child's pose, your hands are a little wider, so you can really pull the chest through the arms and start to feel that rolling of the triceps down and the spinning of the biceps up. And then go as deep as you can without forcing for another full inhalation. And then grounding a little deeper on your exhale breath. Okay, and then inhale, slip your hands back towards your inner thighs, lean back, take hands underneath the knees, and bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. So this is just a lovely counter pose, firming the soles of the feet together, spreading the toes wide. You can take your hands out in front of you, you can hold onto the feet, and then that gentle adduction. So really start to pay attention to this feeling. So as you firm the two feet in towards each other, you start to feel the inner thighs engage as you adduct your inner thighs. So that action of squeezing in and hugging in, we're gonna work into all of our poses today because it's essential for the arm balance. Take another breath in, maybe elongate the spine a little bit, and then exhale, get a little bit deeper into your shape. Okay, and from here, slide hands up towards the toes. Lean back, cross your ankles, and just come into a tabletop position. Knees under hips, hands under shoulders, and then really spread wide through your fingers. Okay, from here, you can pull your right knee in towards your nose. So give it a squeeze. Notice here how you can round your back more, hollow out your armpits. And then on inhale, extend that right leg back. The heel extends back. The crown of the head extends forward. On exhale, just round and squeeze the knee towards the nose. So just a gentle activation of the core here. Inhale, extend. Toes point down, inner thigh working. Exhale, round and squeeze. 
And this time extend the leg, inhale, reach through the crown of the head. And then stay for your exhale. On your next inhale, you're going to tuck those left toes if they're not tucked already. And then straighten your left leg, send your right leg up towards the ceiling. Breathe in here, lift up higher through the heel. And then on an exhale, open your right hip to stack right on top of your left. And then go ahead and bend through the knee. So you want to be really active here through the toes. Check that that left heel is hidden behind the ball of the left foot. And then you want to firm down and forward through your palms, leveling out the shoulders and hollowing the armpits. Relax your face. Okay, keep the activation through your toes. Inhale, squeeze and curl right knee to right upper arm. So here you're starting to feel the hug too. So as you round the upper back, really squeeze the inner right knee to the outer right shoulder. And then go back into your open hip down dog. Inhale, flare the toes. Spill that right hip over the left. And then on your exhale, connect the knee to the upper arm. Pause and set the foot outside of the right hand. And then here, you can be on your hands with your straight arms in your runner's lunge. Try to keep this left leg lifted though. We'll lower it in a moment. Those of you that want to come down onto your forearms and that's accessible to you, then you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to stay up on my hands for this round. But feel that you can really squeeze again in and into outer arm and then elongate through the chest space. Really fire up that left thigh. So you want to press the quad right up toward the hamstring. Breathe in. And then gently here, lower your left knee down, breathe out. From here, if you're down on your forearms, you're welcome to stay there. Or, and, we're going to turn the right toes out at a slight angle. So just look that the right toes and that right knee are in one stripe or in alignment. And then you can take your right hand just above the right knee and start to open the right hip out towards the side. So it's like you want to stretch the skin here from your groin towards the knee. Those of you that want to go deeper, you can come to the outer blade of that right foot. And then also just watch this left shoulders are rolling away from the ear. And breathe in. And then bring the foot back, ground it, breathe out. Ground your right hand, tuck your left toe, lift your left knee. And then without dragging this right foot, see if you can step it back to meet the left Palakasana high plank. Inhale to the high plank. Use knees if you need. Chaturanga, exhale, lower half. Up dog, inhale, pull the heart through the arms. Really stretch the chest through. And then exhale, hips lead the way, downward facing dog. And let's take three full rounds of breath here. Firming down through hands and feet. And pulling up those kneecaps and pressing the thighs up and back. And just relaxing the jaw. Hold and breathe for one. And ground a little deep into your hands and feet, two. And stay for three. And glide forward, high plank on your inhale. Tuck your tailbone round your upper back as always. And then hover the knees, exhale above the mat. Tuck the tailbone round the upper back. Breathe in, and gently lower the knees down, breathe out. Okay, to the left side. Firm the palms down, pull your left knee to your nose, inhale, stay for the exhale. And then on your next inhale, extend the left leg back, so the heel reaches back, the crown reaches forward, the toes point down. And then exhale, squeeze and round, protract shoulders. Again, inhale, extend, exhale, squeeze. Extend on your inhale, squeeze on your exhale. Tuck your right toes if they're not already, extend on your inhale, stay for your exhale. On your next inhalation, tuck those right toes, lift the right leg to straight, move into downward facing dog splits. Straightening out through the arms, pressing your chest towards your right thigh. And then inhale, open the left hip on top of the right, spread through the toes, and then Squeeze heel to bum as you bend the knee. And try to level the shoulders, hollow the armpits. And check your alignment here, right heel hidden behind the ball of the foot. If you need to be on the ball of the foot, then you can do so. 
Take one more breath, feel the stretch right into that right calf muscle and right into that left hip. And then exhale, squeeze and curl. So hug in, really squeezing the inner knee to the outer shoulder, rounding the upper back. And then go back to where you came from. So inhale, open hip down dog. Exhale, squeeze round, step foot outside palm. Run as lunge, three breaths. Those of you that came down with your forearms, go ahead. But try to keep this right leg lifted. Look your left toes point directly forward. And then again, you're hugging inner knee to outer shoulder. And breathe into the sensation. Stay, inhale. Gently lower the right knee down. Exhale. You can stay on your forearms if you're there already, or you can pop down. But turn these left toes out. 45 degree angle from the right palm down and then you can take your left hand and sort of encourage the opening of that left hip but again without forcing here firm up your right glute maybe even roll to the outer blade of that left foot if you want more okay and then simply come out of it grounding the palms tucking right toes lifting right knee Press into your palms, breathe in. Without a sound, step that leg foot to meet the right, breathe out. Adjust if necessary, inhale, high plank. Chaturanga, exhale, lower half. Urdhva Mukha Shanasana, inhale, peel heart through, firm up your thighs. Adha Mukha Shanasana, exhale, hips up, hips back. And take a full breath in, and a complete breath all the way out. Okay, from here, take your feet wide to the wide edges of your mat, and then begin to walk your hands back towards the line of the toes. When you get there, take a halfway lift on your inhale, reach the crown of the head forward, spin inner thighs up and back, turn on your toes, so lift them, and then on your exhale, get a little bit deeper, Uttanasana variation, fold over your legs. And this time, cup your fingers, inhale, turn your toes out, your heels in, and sit into Malasana, squat on your exhale. If your heels don't come down, you can always place a block underneath the feet. You can even roll up the back of your mat and take it underneath your heels, which is quite effective. Something like that. Or you can even put a blanket there. We're going to stay here for a moment. Bring the hands to prayer, the elbows into the inner knees, and once again, adduct inner knees to outer arms. Then interlace all of your fingers, except for your index fingers and your thumb and reach your hands forward. Try to tuck the tailbone, lift the buttocks up a little bit, reach through the crown of the head. On an inhale, you're gonna keep your feet as they are, straighten your legs, rise up, tuck the tailbone, lift up the kneecaps, and then exhale, sink back down into your malasana. And we keep going, inhale to lift. Strong exhale takes you down. Again, inhale. Strong exhale, release. This time, inhale, pull the hands to the heart. On your exhale, plant your palms forward, fold over your legs. Slip your hands up your shins, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold forward and down over the legs, gaze navel. Inhale, creep your hands forward to your high plank pose. Stay and stabilize for your exhale. Take a breath in as you round the upper back. And then as you exhale here, lower your left forearm down and then your right, setting up for a forearm plank. Look that your forearms are parallel, your fingers are spread wide, and then you've got to walk your feet back a little bit so that the hips align with the shoulders. From down that left foot, inhale, squeeze right knee to right tricep. Exhale, release the foot to meet the left. Inhale, left foot, left knee to the left tricep, squeeze. Exhale, release the leg. Rise up to your high plank, right hand grounds, left hand grounds, inhaling. Exhale, hanging cobra, the hips lower down. That should feel good. Roll back on the balls of the feet, pull the heart through, plug up your kneecaps, and then exhale, tuck chin, the tips up and back, Ardha Mukha Shonasana, downward facing dog. Take three grounding breaths here. Okay, on your inhalation, step your left foot a little closer towards your right. Leverage the right leg up on your inhale. Rise high to the ball of your left foot. Lift the left heel, even the right heel, even higher. And then on exhale, pivot left toes towards the right palm, 
bend the right knee, squeeze the heel towards the buttocks, and see if you can move into a wild thing. Your left leg extends, your right leg is bent, and your arm comes up and over your head. Take a breath here, inhaling. Once again on your exhale, bend everything. Take your right knee to your right tricep. Those of you that have the hurdler in your practice, if you want the tutorials up on the YouTube channel, you can go ahead and take that. Alternatively, breathe in, keep the ball of the left foot grounded, and see if you can just bend the left elbow, both of your elbows, chaturanga. Then press your arms to straight, extend that right leg skyward, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze, round, and slowly set the foot through for your low lunge. Look at your left foot planted at the 45. Rise, Virabhadrasana, one, inhale. So warrior went to rise, and then three breaths here to ground. From the outer blade of the left foot down, bend deeply your right knee, and try to spin this upper outer left hip point forward, so your hips are level. Reach through the fingertips, extending the ribs away from the waistline, take a breath in. And then on your exhale, weave your right arm underneath your left arm for Garudasana Eagle Arms. Lift the tips of the fingertips up on your inhale, curl your ears back, open your throat a little. And then exhale, lengthen forward, fingertips might even touch down, but try to get that right shoulder inside the line of the right knee. Hold three. Hold two. Hold one, unravel your arms, inhale, high to the ball of the left foot, rise into your high crescent lunge, stay for your exhalation. Reach through the fingertips, breathing in, stay and deepen your bend, exhale. Inhale, lift high through the tips of the fingers, exhale, left hand forward, right arm back, take a vertical twist here. So you're pulling the right hip back, you're gazing towards the right palm and you're really rising high to the ball of that back foot. Come through center, inhale, arms frame the face. Warrior two, exhale, open up. You're facing over the right leg. Look for heel to arch alignment here. Sink deeply down through that right thigh. Stay and breathe. Soft gaze over your right fingertips. One more breath. Reverse the warrior on your inhale, slip your left hand down the back of the left leg, sweep that right arm up and over the head, deepen the bend, breathe in, and then take your variation of Pasvakanasana extended side angle. For this one, I'm simply going to take my forearm to the thigh, but your left hand, excuse me, your right hand can come inside the line of the right foot. You can take a bind or a half bind. Try to roll the left rib, rib, rib cage to the ceiling. But at the same time, roll the right hip underneath you and hollow into your belly. Take a breath. Stay for your exhale. Inhale, arms up, heels in, toes out. Exhale, horse pose, sink down and deep into your shape. From here, wrap your right arm under your left arm. Once again, Garudasana arms. Lift the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Maybe even lift up your 10 toes, sink a little bit deeper, breathe in, and then on your exhale, start to spread your heels out, your toes in, as you fold into Prasarita Padatanasana. Here, your forearms might come down all the way to the mat. Maybe you're hovering them. Maybe even the forehead rests on the upper arms. But try to lift the inner arches of your feet. Plug the outer arches down, soften. Take another moment here. Really feel that deep stretch into the back line of your legs. Okay. And from here, you can skip this out if you need. You can just simply unravel your arms or just unravel the palms so the backs of the hands touch. Take right hand to the left outer shin, left hand to the right outer shin so your forearms cross. And then for this one, we're going to lean towards the right but lift the tip of the left elbow up and gaze under the left arm. Try to level out your hips with your internal awareness there. So you might want to lean slightly to the left. And then really breathe and stretch into the left ribs. And one more breath. Stay for exhale. Lower the left elbow, cross the forearms, come back to center, breathe in. And then unravel your arms, breathe out. Walk your hands forward to stack underneath your shoulders, gaze towards your tip of your nose, breathing in. 
and then take a low lunge to the left leg, breathing out. Inhale to the low lunge. Exhale, don't think too much about it, just step your right foot through, sit on your buttocks, extend your right leg long, take your left foot at a 45, and then we work into Janu Shashasana. Inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, lengthen forward, hold the outer and inner edge of the foot if you can, or rest your hands beside your shin. Three breaths here to lengthen your spine and fold a little deeper. One. Two. And three. Rise up on your inhalation. Plant your left foot down, take your hands to your outer hips, wide of thighs. Firm the palms or cut the fingers. Rise that right leg up for a standing split, breathe in. And then forehead towards left shin, breathe out. Point your right toes down, pull your left hip back. Okay. Take a little lift of your chest so you can keep your hands forward, inhale. And then just simply step back the right foot, exhale to a low lunge. Pull the heart through, breathe in. And then this is modified pyramid pose, breathe out. So come onto the heel of the left foot, pulling the outer left hip back, and then reaching the chest over the line of the leg. Breathe into the stretch. Take one more full breath in and out. Okay, inhale. Low lunge, stay for exhale, plug the right palm down like we have been doing in the last couple classes, lift the left arm up. Easy twist towards the left side. You're more than welcome to stay here or move into a side plank. Any variation, you can roll the right shoulder away from the ear. For this variation, I'm going to pivot to the outer blade of my right foot and simply stack left foot on top of the right. You can also take hold of the, the two piece fingers and thumb to the big left toe and go full bashi if that's in your practice. Stack your hips and lift them. Take a breath in and then exhale, release your left hand down for a high plank pose. Inhale into the high plank. Exhale, lower your left forearm and then your right. Wiggle your toes back for your forearm plank. Inhale here. Exhale, left knee, left tricep squeeze. Left foot meets the right. Inhale, right knee, right tricep, squeeze. Right foot meets the left. Inhale, high plank, palms down, arms straight, breathe in. Exhale, lower your hips, lift your chest, hanging cobra. Plug up your thighs or plug up your kneecaps. Inhale, lift chest through arms. Downward facing dog, hips up and back. Exhaling. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, we move all that to the other side. Step your right foot closer to the left. And leverage your left leg high, inhale. Stay for your exhale. Open the left hip on top of the right, slowly bending the knee. And then see if you can flip your dog here, right toes towards the left palm. This time it's the right leg that straightens, the left leg that remains bent. And you lift your hips open as you breathe into your chest into your belly also. Take a breath and then exhale, bending everything slowly. Take your left knee to your left upper arm, squeeze it in. Take hurdler or simply take your shoulders beyond the fingertips. Bend the elbows backwards like chaturanga. And then everybody straighten up your arms, lift your left leg high to sky. Inhale, full stretch, level hips. And then exhale, squeeze and round knee to nose. Step, step the foot through, low lunge. Look back at your right foot planted at a 45 degree angle and rise up warrior one. Firming down through your feet, elongating through your crown and deepening the bend through that left leg. Three breaths here to really find your pose and soften around the harder edges. From here, let's wrap left arm underneath the right arm. Eagle your arms. Lift up the fingers, but keep the deep bend through that left leg. And then on your exhale, lengthen forward, left shoulder inside the line of the left knee. Hugging in. The inner knee to the outer shoulder once again, relaxing your face. Okay. 
On your inhale, unravel your arms, rise, ball of right foot, sweep the arms all the way up. Stay for your exhale and deepen into your lunge. You should feel this nice stretch right through that right psoas, the right hip flexor. Extend through your arms, inhale, and then vertical twist, right hand forward, left arm back. Can you gaze towards your left fingertips? Squeeze your inner thighs together, stay. Arms frame the face, inhale. Exhale, warrior two, open up. Gazing over your left fingertips this time, finding a deep right angle bend through that left leg. And then see if you can even adduct here slightly, so it's squeezing at least energetically your left heel towards the inner arch of your back foot. Stay, one more breath. Reverse warrior, inhale, sweep the arm up and over, stretch the left lateral side of the body. And then exhale, Pasvakanasana, your variation, three breaths, extended side angle. Once again, revolve the right ribs skyward, but hug the outer left hip under and find a slight hollowing into the belly. Maybe even lean left ear to left side of mat. One more breath. And then slowly, carefully, you're going to rise into a horse pose, so inhale, heels in, toes out, arms up, and then exhale, hands to the heart in Anjali Mudra. Sink a little deeper, maybe even peel up your ten toes. Okay, this time it is the left arm under the right arm, Garudasana arms. Lifting the fingertips up, breathing in, opening your throat maybe even as you gaze up and curl back a little. And then as you exhale, toes spread in, heels spread out, as you fold into Prasarita Padatanasana variation. Again, staying here for three breaths, you can maybe rest the forearms down if that's accessible to you, or you can rest the forehead on the upper arms. Try not to hang out in your heels, spread the weight evenly through your foot, your feet. One more moment. Okay, and then from here, lift the chest a little bit, unravel just the hands, so the backs of the hands touch. Take right hand to left shin, outer shin, and left hand to right. And then this time we are leaning towards the left, lifting the tip of the right elbow up, and trying to gaze underneath that right arm. Maybe you even straighten this left arm to facilitate the twist. And then trying to level out your hips here. Breathing into the right ribs, the right intercostals. Take one more breath. And then exhale, release, forearms cross. On your next inhale, plug your hands under your shoulders, halfway left your chest, breathe in. And then exhale, take a low lunge to the right foot at the top of your mat. You can move anything out the way here. Gaze forward, cup your fingers, it creates a little bit of space. If this is difficult for you, you can always place your hands on two blocks or books just to elevate the palms away from the mat. This will help you step the leg all the way through. Might be a little bit easier to get there. And then sit down on that left buttocks. Place the right foot into the left inner thigh like Janu Shishasana. Firm your sit bones down, extend your arms up, breathe in. And then lengthening forward, breathe out, three breaths. Just connecting to the feeling of the shape in your body and feeling the firming of the right foot to the left inner thigh. So again, that hugging inwards feeling. And one more breath. Okay, and then from here, simply sit up. From your right foot down, if you needed the blocks, you can place them down outside the outer thighs. From the palms down, see if you can send that left leg up. And then for a standing splits, exhale, forward folding over the right leg. Look that the left toes point down. Soften through your jaw. And try to reach from the inner right, inner arch of your left foot right to the inner groin. Okay, then lift your chest, breathe in. Take a left, do a long step back with your left foot breathing out. Low lunge briefly, inhaling. And then rise heel of the right foot, ball of the left. So you're moving into a variation of pyramid pose here. Stretching, stretching 
to the back line of your right leg. Okay. One more breath. And then inhale back into your low lunge, pull the chest through from your left hand down, exhaling. And then sweep that right arm open up towards the side. So you're always welcome to stay right here or move into any variation of Vashisthasana. So last time I cued holding two piece fingers and thumbs to that big left toe, and then maybe moving into the full expression of your Vashisthasana. But take the same shape you did on the other side. So I was stacking my right foot on top of my left, just taking a normal side plank. Please watch left shoulders rolling from the ear and the hips are level. Take one more breath, inhale, right hand down, high plank, exhale. Shoulders stack above the wrist, breathe in, right forearm down and then the left forearm plank, exhale, wiggle your feet back. Right knee, right tricep, inhale, squeeze, right leg extends back. Left knee, left tricep, squeeze, left foot extends back. Plant the palms, straighten up your arms, inhaling, lower your hips, lift your chest, exhaling. Pull the heart through the line of the arms and then exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take breath in and breath out. Okay, this time let's move into a turbo dog. So shorten your hands or shorten your stance a little bit so hands come towards the toes. And then you're going to make the elbows go out to the side so it feels like really lizardy and weird. And then you're going to try to hug the inner uh, the elbows in towards one another until you feel a little bit of a shake and the forearms become kind of parallel. And then see if you can plant both of the forearms down and just move into a dolphin pose. So here the chest presses back towards the thighs. Broaden the upper back by rolling the shoulders away from the ears and soften. Breathing with sound for three. And two. And one. Okay, gaze forward towards your palms, rise to the balls of your feet, bend your knees so your belly connects to your thighs, and then don't think too much. Keep your palms planted, but lift your forearms on an exhale, see if you can jump feet to your hands, and then find a forward fold over both of your legs on exhale. Udva Hastasana, the first one, high mountain rise up, gaze towards your thumbs, tuck your tailbone down, and then pull the hands to the heart for a Samastik to heat. Here you can simply take a resting breath in and out. From here we're going to take our first full vinyasa. If you have any variations and you want to spirit dive or handstand practice, this is a nice opportunity for that. I'm just going to take a simple vinyasa and you're going to meet in downward facing dog. All right, and then we're going to work into our peak pose and then wind down. So when you're ready, lift your arms up, breathe in, gaze towards your thumbs, really re-energize here. And then as you exhale, fold and bow over your legs, tuck in, gaze, belly button. Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, lift and lengthen, reach the crown forward, the sitting bones back. And then exhale, step, hop or float back, vinyasa to downward facing dog. As always, linger where it feels good and let the movement follow the breath. and find yourself in your downward facing dog. Go for a nice stretch here, feeling the symmetry and the spaciousness that you've created in your body in such a short amount of time. Okay, and then from here, just look towards your palms, rise to the balls of both of your feet, step or float all the way through, come to a seat. Okay, and then from your seat, give yourself a little bit of space, so come back on your mat, and then from here, extend both of your legs. You're going to bend the right knee and then keep that left leg grounded. Now here, if you need to sit up again on a cushion to elevate your seat to get more length in your spine, then do that. Otherwise, just sit on your, your buttocks and then we're going to take this left leg, right leg, and take it into a seated pigeon pose. So in the seated pigeon, the right knee comes out towards the side. It's basically like you're doing pigeon, um, half pigeon pose, but you're in a seat, as if that wasn't obvious enough. And then from here, you can just hold onto the outer blade of the right foot and gently rock the knee out to the side. Try to lift the sternum. If you have open hips and it's accessible to you, you can take the sole of the right foot into the crook of the left elbow and then really cradle that leg. So it's a little bit deeper here, but you're feeling this upward lift through the sternum. Don't lose your awareness and your connection to that left leg. So the heel plugs down. 
Okay, and take a couple moments here. So we're just opening up through that left hip a little more deeply. You're more than welcome to stay here and work this shape. So if this is tough for you, I'd recommend staying here and just working into that hip mobility. Alternatively, we have opened a lot into the backs of the legs. You can take this right arm and place it underneath this right leg. So it's like you want to put this leg on top of your right shoulder like a backpack. From here, take your left hand to the outer blade of the right foot. Now, if you need a strap or a scarf, you can always hook a strap around the ball of the foot to help. And then we're going to take the right hand to the heart like uh, in a half prayer. And then on your exhale, you're going to extend the arm right out to the side and then see if you can straighten that right leg up. So here we're in compass pose. In the compass pose, you're leaning the back of the head into the back of the, into the front of the leg. And then you're opening again into the left ribs as you revolve the chest. So we have prepared the body for this revolving type of shape. And take one more moment here. Okay, and then very slowly re-bend that leg. Take out your arm from underneath it and simply place the right ankle above the left knee. Take your hands back and bend your left knee for a figure four. Flexing through that right foot. Or maybe walk your hands back a little bit, so the fingertips face the bum, and then roll the heads of the shoulders back. And then release into that right shoulder, or both of your shoulders, but specifically the right after the compass. You're gonna firm the left foot down, lift up your hips, and reverse your tabletop. So you wanna lift the hips up, so it's like the back of the body rises into the front of the body. And then roll the shoulder heads back from your left foot down. Hold three, two, and one. For a little bit of core activation here, we're going to try to straighten out the left leg. Bring the buttocks between the line of the arms. If this is not working for you, just sit your buttocks down. But try to lift up, squeeze inner thighs together, flow through your toes. And then inhale, lift all the way up again, breathing in. And then here on your exhale, release your left bum to your left heel. And then parallel that left shin to the front of your mat. You're more than welcome. If, this is, if the knee is like this, then you want to rather take the ankle in front of the other one or just take a normal seat, uh, cross-legged seat. Otherwise, Agni Stambhasana here, activate through your toes, hug your inner thighs together. You can even take your buttocks flesh up and away and then walk yourself forward if you can. Go as deep as you can without forcing. Fully engage through the feet. So the activity in the toes as they curl back towards the knee, it's super important to protect the joints around the knee. Maybe get a little deeper for your next exhale. Okay, and then rise up. Lean back. Simply unravel your legs. Ground your feet. And we'll move to the other side. The right leg extends. Sit on firmly on your sitting bones. And then let's take this left leg into the, the seated pigeon. Take your variation and gently opening up into that hip. So you're more than welcome to stay here. For me, this side is a lot tighter. So we'd usually spend a little bit more time on the tighter side. And then when you feel ready, it's the left arm or the left shoulder underneath the left leg, like a little backpack. It's the right hand to the outer blade of the left foot. The left hand comes to a half prayer at the heart. It's okay to have a little bit of rounding through the back here. You're going to straighten it out. And then you're going to open the arm out towards the side, quite far out to the side, and then start to lean back into the leg as you straighten it. And then start to straighten out through the spine too. And revolving open through the right side of the body, the right ribs. And one more breath, wherever you are. And then gently release. Okay, release the ankle above the line of the right knee. Take your fingertips behind you, bend your right knee, figure four your legs. Activating again through your feet. Pad your hands back a little bit, firm down through that right foot. Lift up your hips, open across your collarbones. Firming through the triceps, a really good one for that. Back to the arms, take a breath in, and then make sure your hands are wide enough for the bum to come through. The buttock swims back, and you straighten out that right leg, flare through your toes, hug your inner thighs together. 
and rise up on your inhale, lift up your hips, and then exhale, buttocks towards the line of the right heel. Take your variation of your uh, cross-legged seat, either Agni Stambhasana, Swastikasana, or a simple cross-legged seat, and then walk yourself forward. So if you're just in a simple cross-legged seat and you're folding forward, and that's opening into your hips, that's a really good place to be. And go a little bit deeper without forcing. Try to press down the fingerprints to from down through the hips. Three, two, and one. Pad your hands up towards the shin. And from here, simply unravel your legs. Okay, so you're gonna keep, maintain your position where you are. I'm gonna turn towards you. And what we're gonna work into here is Titi Basana from the ground up. You may need your blocks, so I'm gonna show you with or without blocks. If you wanna pause, watch the tutorial, um, and then go back and do it with me again, that might be a good idea. Otherwise, just do it with me. Okay, so from here, you're gonna take this right arm, and I'm not mirroring you, so the right arm is gonna come underneath the right leg, just like you did before. So putting the, the knee, on top of the shoulder and then see if you can hold that you got to lean back a little bit and then do the same thing on the left side now here your feet I know it looks a little weird your feet are apart then you're going to take your hands down in front of your hips and begin to plow down through the palms lean forward very important to lean forward and then can you straighten your arms and cross your ankles one on top of each other so here's super important, you're squeezing the inner thighs to the outer arms and pulling the chest forward. Now, you can stay right here, or with all the work we've done through the hamstrings, maybe you can start to straighten the legs and take the buttocks back. Pull the heart through, three, two, and one. Slowly bend and come all the way out. Okay, so, in a normal class, I would show one variation, but I'm gonna give you another way to get into the pose if you didn't manage that. So I'll show you from the other side. So you're gonna turn, I'm gonna turn around, and from here I'm just gonna find myself into Malasana. And here I'm gonna use my blocks. So I'm gonna take the blocks behind the heels, and fast forward this if you don't need it, and then just come into a wider variation of your forward fold. Folding over the line of the legs. From here, just like you were doing seated, you're going to wrap the left arm underneath the left leg. Your fingertips wrap around the front edge of your block. And then do it on the right too. For this one, the elbows bend back like chaturanga, and you're going to sit on the upper arms. Then maybe the feet start to lighten, and you can cross them. Okay, and then it's the same thing here. Maybe stay there, or begin to extend forward through the chest, pointing through the toes. Again, adducting inner thighs. One more breath, and then gently release. Okay, move your blocks out the way, and then let's all come into a Malasana squat for broken wing pose, which is a lovely release here. So you're simply going to take the back of the left palm, place it into the inner thigh or the inner groin, and then do the same on the right hand side. And then you're lightly squeezing the inner knees to the upper arm, to pull the heart through, and it's such a beautiful release here through the backs of the arms. One more breath. And then let's release that. Firm the palms down, parallel your feet. You can creep to the top of your mat. We go for final vinyasa. Inhale, halfway lift your chest crown forward. Exhale, fold down and deep. Let's move into Utkatasana here for the shoulder release. Bend the knees, rise into chair pose. On your inhale, lift your palms up. And then exhale, we're interlacing the hands behind the spine. Pull the hands away from the buttocks and lift and broaden your chest. Feel the shoulder blades kiss the spine. And then on exhale, folding forward and down. Gaze towards your navel. Lift the arms up and over the head. This should feel really nice. Holding for one. Try not to hang out in your heels. Two. And three, release the hands, rise back up, chair pose, inhale, exhale, plant your palms forward, fold over your legs. Inhale, left leg can prepare, gaze, nose, 
Last vinyasa step, half float or fly back. Umi in, downward facing dog. Take full breath in and complete clearing breath out. Okay, gaze towards your palms, rise to the balls of your feet, breathing in. Once again, step up, float through and come into Paschimottanasana. Last pose before Shavasana, pretty much as always. Firm down the heels, firm down through the seat. If you want to lengthen your legs, you can use a block. Arms up and over the head, breathing in, and then lengthening forward, maybe placing the block around the balls of the feet if you've got one. Otherwise, just take the outer edges of the feet or even rest your fingertips beside your shins. Three, releasing deep breaths here. Elongate through the back of the heart. Reach the front of the heart towards the toes. And once again, return to your breath. Feel the buoyancy in the back body as you inhale. And deepening the stretch on your exhalation. All right, and then inhale, lift the chest up. Remove any propage around you. And then exhale simply, fall back, Shavasana. Take a moment to integrate and rest and reset. <laughs>